hi guys and welcome back to another YouTube video and um, so this one I wanted to make on another frequent question that I get asked all the time and I was in the same boat a few years ago in asking this question um, and that is how to become a student midwife um, or I guess the end goal is obviously a midwife um, so I wanted to share a bit about my story so when I was, so I finished school when I was 17, I was quite young for my year, um, and I knew that I wanted to be a midwife from the get-go. So, midwifery course itself, so there's a few ways that it can be done. So I was lucky um, in Australia in the sense that there is a direct midwifery course. Um, by that I mean that you don't have to do nursing first. So it was very much the way in the past, you needed to do nursing first, and then midwifery was a graduate degree on top of that. So I'm so glad that isn't the case now because I think that was about 10 years ago, or maybe eight, nine years ago, that it changed at the particular university that I went to, that that course um, became on offer, because they really are such different degrees. I mean, of course, people, some people will argue that it's all healthcare, but the thing is, with healthcare is this. Pregnant women aren't sick. Generally speaking, they are healthy young women having babies, which is just another incredible life step. Okay, so let me get back on track. So, depending on what um, country you're in, what city you're in, um, it would depend whether the university that offers midwifery only offers it as a postgraduate subject after nursing or after another degree, but generally nursing, um, or if they have a straight bachelor of midwifery. And it also depends what you want. For example, if you want the flexibility of being able to be a nurse and a midwife in one degree, nursing first and midwifery, I mean, that's amazing, right? For me personally, I have no interest in sick people. Um, it's just not where my heart is. I didn't, uh, yeah, it's not up my alleyway. Whereas delivering babies and being with women and during pregnancy and breastfeeding and all of that, I'm pretty sure I was born to be a midwife, just saying. Um, so yeah, it totally depends on what you want and what you feel as well. So it's a three year degree. It's very intense. It undoubtedly should be longer and well, in my opinion, and is jammed into three years. It is a crazy amount of work. So probably the most time consuming slash phenomenal Part of the midwifery course is a process called the continuity of care portfolio. So essentially that means you as a student midwife learn the most, um, what's the word, beneficial way of care for women and their families in pregnancy and the postnatal period. So what that entails is that as a student midwife you have 20 women, I think it's five the first year, five the second year, and 10 the last year, something to that equivalent, and you follow these women so you essentially meet them ideally very early in pregnancy so say 12 weeks you meet them and you follow, you go to every one of their appointments you're you're on call for their labor you're on call for their birth and then you go and see them postnatally and it is i'm gonna say life-changing like it really is to be able to develop a bond like that with a complete stranger who's allowing you completely into their space their birth you know, it, it, it still blows my mind. Actually, the whole midwifery thing still blows my mind. Like, I get paid to be here with you. Like, this is phenomenal. The best thing about that is that still to this day, so people or women, families that I cared for and was able to be with in my first year of university, what's that, like six years ago, I am still in contact with. And so their children are turning five and six and it is so cool to be like, oh my God, like you were one of the first babies that I ever delivered or that I ever helped deliver. And, you know, I got to know you during that process. It's actually so cool. So oh, in saying that, so that's definitely the positive side of it. Like you, you learn how to be so empathetic and caring and loving towards these families and you learn just how important continuity of care really is in pregnancy and birth. The flip side to that is that for three years, so you're unpaid and you do so many hours. Oh my Lord. I was at that damn hospital 
day in, day out, not even day, can we say day and night in, day and night out? It was ludicrous. Like, I was, you know, 8, 17, 18, 19, 20. All my friends are out partying. What was I doing? I was on call. Got my scrubs next to my bed. Got my stethoscope ready to go. I always had little packed snacks ready to go because you never know when you're going to get called. Um, and there was always such excitement and adrenaline with that. But there was also that aspect of it's hard. It's really hard to be on call for someone else and a very unpredictable situation. And another thing that can be tricky with that is that you could be on call and the hospital won't call you. So for some reason they decide not to call you or, you know, various reasons, but you end up missing that birth, which means that you need to go and recruit another woman from the start, which, oh my God, I can't even tell you. Anyway, so that can definitely be the time consuming part. So I hope that's like a little summary of the continuity of care, which is definitely the most kind of time consuming and energy consuming. So it's very difficult to be um, on call for pregnant women and to also hold down another job and be studying. So that's really tricky. It's very tricky to be able to work during university um, to be a midwife just because, you know, if a pregnant woman who you're following can only have an appointment on Tuesday at midday, you can only miss so many, you know? If she goes into labor when the day, the, you know, the minute that you start work, what are you gonna do? I think another thing worth talking about because I didn't really understand the depth of it is the immense heartbreak that can come with midwifery because it's not just another job you know a patient isn't just a patient because after spending five hours with them during their labor you deeply care about their outcomes you care about their baby you've heard all about their family life you know you've created this bond and they will ultimately remember you likely for the rest of their lives you know we move on we have the next patient, blah, blah, blah. But people generally have only a few children, so they will remember how you made them feel. They will remember how you comforted them. They will remember how you taught them to be a mother. All of these things, and they're so, so, so important. You know, a bad day and a normal job, it's hard to relate to after a while, you know? Like I remember coming home and thinking, or people would complain about their jobs. And I think, you have no idea what a bad day is. Because a bad day in midwifery isn't, you know, the average bad day, it's losing a baby. Or, you know, ha having to tell a mum terrible news. Or, you know, watching someone suffer immensely from mental health issues. You know, there's these overwhelmingly heartbreaking issues in midwifery. Um, and I guess it needs to be like that because without the heartbreaking issues, there wouldn't be the immense joy that is when everything is smooth or when a baby, you know, graduates from the NICU or all things like that. Um, so the highs and the lows definitely mirror each other. And it takes time to be able to build up your emotional resilience to issues. Um, but you never want to be so distant that you aren't fully there for a patient or for, you know, for a mum, for a baby, for a, for a partner. So... It's tricky in that capacity with midwifery because you always want to feel that closeness and you want that connection and you want women to feel safe and cared for. But in the same sense, you are opening yourself up as well for if drama or tragedy and something like that kind of strikes, it's going to affect you. Like I, I will forever remember the tragedies that I have been a part of or been witness to in midwifery and they will always kind of be with me. And if I think about them, they will undoubtedly make me cry years and years and years on. I think generally midwives and people that go into healthcare are compassionate and empathetic people that do relate to you know human connection and they enjoy that um, ability to be able to build those connections, those personable connections. So I think if you're like me, we're kind of doomed with this forever, but it's also not a bad thing because being able to empathize, like not just sympathize, but fully empathize with a woman about the situation that they're going through is so unique. And it's also so beneficial in their recovery or in their, you know, in that moment to be able to feel like my healthcare provider, you know, the person that I have trusted with my own pregnancy care and the care of my baby truly, truly cares about me, you know? And that's, that's still such a privilege. So whilst it's hard, 
becoming a midwife and being a midwife, it is so cool. Like, oh, oh my gosh. I could cry just thinking about it. All right, thanks so much guys for watching another video. Um, if you liked it, please subscribe for more videos um, and let me know as well what you guys wanna see um, and we will chat soon, bye.